All right, boys and girls, it's time to talk about tier sets. And uh, does your tier set suck? Uh, it probably does. Uh, mm. Well, for some, it will really suck. And uh, the general idea of these tier sets is that yeah, they're boring and they kind of suck. And uh, we'll get to why and understand a little bit uh, how Blizzard is approaching this. Because at the end of the day, tier sets are a very impactful, I would say, end game um, objective for you to be able to perform and play your character to the best you can, basically. So in that regard, um, we've been kind of postponing this for a while because yeah, yeah. changes have been coming into tier sets, you know, uh, then tuning is ongoing and all of that. But I think it's time to uh, understand why these tier sets uh, suck. Because uh, some of them really do suck, uh, okay? And uh, we'll, uh, we'll find out uh, what's going on under the hood and what can we expect in the future. Based on this, we'll see exactly how uh, how things can maybe progress or be better in the future. In season two, for sure. Well, yeah. um, to start it off, basically they kind of have to suck in a way since uh, going into Shadowlands, whether or going into Dragonfly, whether or not, <laughs> um, whether or not you like the new- Going into Warlords of Draenor, I'm sorry, man, go ahead. <laughs> Whether or not you like the new talent system, it's it kind of brings a new flavor to your spec. Obviously, you can be one of those players that copy pastes your builds and you don't really care what is going on there. Or you could actually, you know, I want to put a point there, I want a point there. So the, it changes a little bit what you do because you're going to start to figure out, okay, I want to build it this way, I want to build it that way. So that adds a layer of depth and customization to your character that you definitely didn't have in Shadowlands and before. And adding that on top of that uh, tier sets that are supposed to, you know, impact a certain type of playstyle, which is usually historically what they aim to do to kind of add a little pizzazz to your rotation, that just cues it. And that could essentially force you to like negate half of your talent trees to, to uh, essentially prioritize the effect of the tier set. And that's just counterproductive in uh, Blizzard's hope of you experimenting and discovering this new uh, system. So that's why the tier sets are bland, sucky-ish, which for some it's okay, and for others it's not okay. Yeah, well, uh, let's let's just, first of all, let's just quote Blizzard, because I think it's important. Let's yeah. just if, uh, quote them. So just reading off of their blue post here um, on uh, the, the Dragon Flight class set armor design. Uh, we set a few goals for this round of class sets. First and foremost, these class set bonuses are not as complex as the effects on 9.2 class sets. <laughs> no shit! Uh, the new talent trees have resulted in a lot of changes to classes in Dragonflight, and we want you all to be able to play those classes without class sets that significantly change your rotations or resource economies. This is not to say that we won't make more complex or rotationally impactful class sets in the future, but you'll find that these bonuses generally take a light touch on features like resource generation and cooldown manipulation. Another goal, this is a little bit more important here, that came from wanting you all to have a chance to get familiar with Dragonflight's new classes is that we want these class sets to have minimal impact on your talent choices. This is uh, to want to be remembered. <laughs> we want you to be able to play well, the way you choose in whatever content you prefer. As a result, they generally modify core class abilities or talents that are learned near the top of the tree. They may have synergies with uh, talents further down the tree, but they shouldn't make you feel li like specific builds are or capstone talents are required. Okay, let's keep in mind this because this is their quote. Yeah, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll 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 get to to some of the designs because. Um, although this is their intent and this is what they, they declared, this is like from the first uh, showing off of the tier sets where a lot of the tier sets were forced into picking specific talents. So what we're trying to underline here is that we still have tier sets that are basically, um, well, they're not for, for coming and saying, yeah, you have to pick this talent, but it's kind of it's like a no-brainer. You have to go and take a specific talent. Oh, 100%. I think we can actually give a couple of examples. Let's get it. And I can start off with uh, the, the the new class, the Evoker, specifically Preservation set here set, which uh, just to, for context for people who haven't been keeping up with what the bonuses do, uh, the two set makes Empower spells increase Reversion's chance to critically heal by 25% for 6 seconds, Reversion being one of the spells. 
and the force it makes reversions healing have a chance to cause your next living flame to cast instant and deal 20% increased damage or healing and it stacks up to two times. Now this poses a couple of issues. Uh, to their credit, reversion is a spell that you learn pretty early into the talent tree, it's literally on the second row. However, to be able to get a proper use of reversion, you have to keep building into it with further talents down the row like golden hour and so on and so forth, which right now based on the tuning that we have available, is not the best way to build your preservation. There are other ways and other spells that you can build around to get proper throughput and be efficient with your healing. The second issue with this is, is that the two set makes in power spells increase reversion's chance to critically heal by 25%. Obviously, reversion has a critically heal component into its mechanic. The problem with this is that the way Evoker works, and specifically preservation in this case, is that you want your empower spells to be cast ASAP. Uh, because that's you, how you get the most value out of your kit. Now, the way that the two set is supposed to kind of take the most amount of uh, value out of your kit is to, for you to stagger these empower spells to get the most amount of buffs to reversion. So it's, it's counterproductive to the way that the rotation works, so not only does it force you to heavily invest into reversion, otherwise the tier set is like, meh. Oh, and it also forces you to use your empower spells in a way that's counterproductive to your, to your class. And with the four set issue is that it buffs Living Flame. Living Flame is a baseline spell <laughs> um, for the class and also for it to be efficient as for as a preservation, you have to talent into it with Scarlet Adaptation and um, if we're talking about AoE, Leaping Flame. So that's two extra talents for the four set to get proper value out of it because otherwise it would just feel weird. Living Flame doesn't really do a lot for preservation unless you talent into it and incorporate it into your rotation in a certain way. So this slightly goes against what they're saying that they're intending the tier set to accomplish. Yeah, yeah. and it's a similar story to uh, Assassination Rogue. Um, uh, for, for, all, for all of you who don't know what uh, the bonuses are, it's basically the two set will have in Venom increase your poison damage by 10%. Um, and uh, the four set, when your weapon poisons uh, deal direct damage, you have a 50% chance to gain septic wounds. Uh, this will increase all bleed damage by 2% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. Now, here's the deal. Uh, in Venom, increasing your poison damage uh, will inevitably uh, uh, get you and um, almost force you to get Dragger Temper Blades. You know why? Because that talent will have you put on 4 different poisons. And uh, judging by the actual value it gets, it's gonna double. So your two set gets double value with that talent. This is a direct contradiction with the, uh, let's uh, quote it again. <laughs> um, well, where, where is it? So um, we want these class sets to have minimal impact on your talent choices. Uh, you cannot have a talent that buffs that two set by double. This is the, this is uh, this is the the main issue, right? Um, because it, it's kind of like simple mathematics, man. You you can you, instead of two poisons, you you have four, and whatever you use in venom, you get a buff to all of those poisons. Yeah. You so you will have to be crazy to not pick that talent. I mean, okay, if you really don't want to perform, uh, uh, I'm not even talking min max in here. I'm talking about just you know performing optimally you know, doing some some crazy damage or whatever, then sure, don't pick it. But this two set bonus uh, from assassination just goes directly into the capstone. Not even not even like a, a starter talent. It's the capstone, baby, just right at the back. You, you get Dragon Temple Blades, you get double the value for that two set. And it goes against what they uh, what, what they said. I'm not, it's not a problem you want to play with that. That's a cool talent to begin with. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But uh, but in terms of like the philosophy they're putting out here, maybe you don't want because you cannot have three capstones as as an assassination rogue, right? So at some point you'll have to make a uh, you know a decision in specific scenarios or whatever. And with this two set, you're kind of always always suckered in into getting dragon temple to dra bleh, 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 dragon tempered blades. Okay. Um, but I, I would like I would like to say that 
there's the there's also, do, do we give another example? Uh, um, I do have, uh, similarly to maybe something that m people can relate to with more is Restoration Druid, which is not the new class, but also has a tier set that kind of wants you to really pick a talent regardless of what you want to do. So the two set for Restoration Druid makes Rejuvenation, Life Bloom, Wild Growth, Efflorescence, and Tranquility chance to critically heal increase by 10%. Now, obviously, you have to talent into Efflorescence to get the value of it, and also uh, you know, get the crits, you don't have to, you still, uh, this still applies to the other spells, but the force that makes a fluorescence critical heals, increase the healing of your next wild growth by 5%, stacking up to 5 times, and life bloom critical heals reduce the cooldown of nature swiftness. Both nature swiftness and efflorescence are tones that you have to get into. Nature swiftness is not that big of a deal, but efflorescence is all the way on the left hand side of the talent tree, uh, in, uh, past the first gate, so it's kind of in the middle of the talent tree, and if you want to pass towards the right, you'll have to take a fluorescence. Now, we can argue the fact that a fluorescence has always been a core part of Druid no matter what content you did, and it's an important spell to work into your kit. However, it is a talent that you have to get. Otherwise, obviously, half of the four set does not work for you if you don't talent into a fluorescence. And particularly, that's not necessarily bad, but if we're talking about, you know... Yes, uh, it is! It's fucking bad! <laughs> if we're talking about new players trying to get into the game and uh, experimenting with the talents, Pertaining into the philosophy of Blizzard's devs uh, when it comes to designing of these tier sets, they will not get the value out of uh, this unless they take a fluorescence. And if they have to take a fluorescence, they're like, okay, well, I have to take these part, these talents to get to a fluorescence. D wh what do I do from here, right? So obviously we come into the guides and all of that where people either just wing it and just have fun, in which case, <laughs> fantastic for you. But if you want to perform, you'll have to actually either sim it, test it yourself, or look up for a guide which is probably something that I would go on a limb and say that the devs do not want people to feel like they have to do. Yeah, they always said this on the record. It is, you know, people should not, I mean, if they want to be optimal and whatever and just, you know, be uh, as knowledgeable as possible about their specs, sure, but they don't really, when, when they're designing a a uh, spec or a, they said they don't really want to have, in, you know, the, the first inst instinct for the player to be, okay, let me check out Wallhead or Marcelin online uh, for a guide, you know. Uh, but there are um, many good positives to uh, to the tier yeah, sets. Yeah, there, there well. are some, some good there examples. Are, there are good examples here as well. And mind you, uh, there, a lot of these sets have changed since their initial showing off, right? Um, I, I'll I'll talk a little bit about the the Unholy Decay set, which is a pure example where you are not forced into any talent. This is exactly as they um, in as they stated from the the philosophy behind designing these tier sets. So the two sets for Unholy is basically Bursting of Festering Wound uh, will grant your ghoul vile infusion, increasing their damage and attack speed by 10% for 5 seconds. It just buffs your pet's damage, which is great. It, it doesn't it doesn't throw you in some sort of talent that, oh my god, I have to take this to, to have more value for this tier set bonus. And furthermore, the four set, your primary ghoul's attacks have a 15% chance to increase your, your damage and haste by 10% for n second, uh, 8 seconds. Uh, this chance is increased during Vile Infusion. Vile Infusion being the, the thing that you get from the two sets. So it's nice that it, uh, the two set and four set kind of feed off of each other. That's one thing. But there's no uh, uh, forced way to play this or to get a talent to make this even more valuable as it is with uh, Assassination or uh, Resto Druid, right? This is a great example where, yeah, it, it gets on, on the, the resources, if you can consider like haste a resource or the attack speed of your pet a resource, and just a little bit more modification yeah. or amping up to your damage, which is really, really good. As an unholy decay, um, you know, the pet damage is like like a big ass portion of uh, the all of the damage you can do, yep. and it's uh, great for both single target and AOE, and you know, having like uh, buffs to damage and then haste and all of that is uh, that's good in really any situation any situation like you cannot really complain that <laughs> oh my god this is uh, this is not good here so um, another yeah. another uh, even simpler example that goes even deeper into the uh the the sucks part as in this is having demon hunter is probably one of the simplest and the most boring uh tier sets but it's the least impactful in terms of your talent. So what the two set does is makes Chaos Strike and Blade Dance chance to critical strike increase by 5%. You get 5% extra crit chance on your two wow. additional abilities. <laughs> and the critical strike damage is also increased by 10%. So 10% crit damage. Wow! <laughs> 
And the fourth set makes these two abilities have a 20% chance to increase the damage you deal by 8% for 6 wow! seconds. <laughs> and uh, Chaos Strikes uh, and Critical Strikes increase this chance to 40%. So basically, this is all just very, very, very bread and butter. Neither of these two abilities are even talents in the talent tree that you have to get. And the effects that they give you is just raw damage. And crit, we can argue if crit is something that uh, Havoc will uh, be happy to talent into, or to gear into rather. And it has kind of been an impactful stat in the last two patches of Shadowlands and will, it wouldn't be particularly strange for you as a Havoc to want a lot of crit into your gear to take advantage especially of the crit damage. Now, an opposite example of this, also extremely simple and probably even fun rotationally, is the Survival Hunter which buffs a uh, Raptor Strike or Mongoose Bite, Carve and Butchery to have more damage, 15% extra damage, and the Force Set makes so that uh, these abilities have a 20% chance to make the next recast of that ability be free and deal 50% increased damage. It's incredibly boring, but whenever you have uh, abilities that consume resource be free and deal more damage, sometimes that's it feels fun in a rotation, especially if you think about Mongoose Bite. And it does actually make Mongo's Bite feel really good, but you have to talent into Mango's, Mongo's Bite. Also, you do not have Carve Eye or Butchery Baseline, and this probably will impact the, the, the tier set and the spec overall more because of the way that the Survival Talent is designed, where you will most likely have to take either of these two no matter what build you have for Survival. So you're already forced into talents that you might not want, and you are, you're doubly forced into talents that you might not want, because of the tier set, because you're probably not going to want to use Mongoose Bite in AoE, right? So this is a little bit weird and a little bit counterproductive, but it's kind of like a mix of what they said where yeah. uh, it's simple, but you kind of have to take these abilities. I mean, you don't have to take Mongoose Bite, but you're not going to want to buff Raptor Strike. No, it's, it's just a couple of examples where they hit the mark with what they set out to do and where they definitely did not set the mark on what they set out to do. And just to, to clear the record here, uh, we agree with this philosophy. We agree oh, with yeah. the fact that um, having tier sets from the first tier with this whole new, um, quote unquote, new uh, talent through a system uh, is a bit much. And I'm not talking about, you know, mere flame or even you watching or whatever. It, it's mainly like the, for the big majority of the players, it could be too much, right? It, I think even the, the talent system for a lot of people who add started maybe playing in mop or in warlords or, or whatever they didn't really know what the fuck was up with these whole points being placed down there and since a lot of the, the designs of these talents are not quite what they're supposed to be and there's not a lot of noob traps um in a lot of the specs having an, a tier set that would be let's say similar to how we were used to in 9.2 and previous expansions would just add to a bigger problem and um, I think it's for the best to just have it just have the people first get accustomed to the the new talent system with yeah. tier sets that eventually just add up a little bit of possess you know yeah your tier set sucks if you're gonna compare it to what you had in 9.2 in previous expansions your tier set sucks that's guarantee it's boring it doesn't change anything it doesn't you know uh, call on a, a big ass titan to fight for you or whatever it's nothing visually it's not nothing but i think that's okay that's that's they usually do this intro tier sets in, when an expansion launches and i think uh, in the in the scope of the new talents or the new talent system being a new talent system or uh, being something reminiscent of what we had pre-mop it's still a little bit more egregious since this new talent system actually includes your class, your spec spells as well. Because you learn baseline abilities from the talent system. Baseline abilities like Wild Growth and baseline abilities like Efflorescence that you had already prior to in, in the old talent system. So even if a tier set is supposed to alter a talent, it, it's probably doubly egregious now. Because not only do you have talents that you would have normally, but you also have baseline kit abilities into the talent tree that you're going to be forced to, uh, to take. So this is why it's a little bit weird. Normally, if we're like mid the expansion, late expansion, this wouldn't be that bad. It's like, oh, I get to try out this, this quirky thing that I didn't play before yeah. because the tier set buffs it more. And that's usually the cool thing that tier sets can do. Yeah, and I, I think this will will definitely happen in, in future patches. Yeah. I don't think we, we, we should have a any concern in, in that aspect. Uh, for now, it's uh, it's looking like how it's supposed to, at least philosophically, this is how it's supposed to be done. Uh, we just shown off a couple of examples of this, that, not it. 
and this is it maybe some things will still change uh, prior to the launch yeah. of uh, not not dragonflight the se season one there's still uh, chances to be tunes and changes to to not have specific specs forced into specific talents or vice versa um just looking at the the the, the tier sets that are actually uh designed into that with that philosophy in mind you know just buffing some damage or some resources that's all fine and dandy and there's gonna be a part two on this video where we are going to talk about the future of dragonflight where we're gonna address how they can potentially develop either new talents uh for the existing talent trees paired up with brand new tier sets for new seasons that will actually impact that uh, yeah. But for now, this is part one. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, and um, you, you should definitely answer this question. Does your tier set suck? Leave it down in the <laughs> comments, okay? And uh, we, we right. want to have a chat about it. Also, patrons. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the content that we do on a daily basis with your platform. It does help us out make this on a daily thing and actually explore these new ideas and new types of videos. And if you like it dear viewer and you want to see more of this and you want to help out a little bit check the patreon platform down below the link is in the description you'll have tears and all that patreon-y things that you might have heard so far uh, on our channel and every other channel you'll have tears not tier sets thank you everybody for watching we shall see you soon in part two of this one with the future of dragonflight to be continued next week bye It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.